were just sitting right here, Russell and I, and some guy stopped at the bike trail and was like, there's a bear behind you. I was like, yeah, totally. like, you mean like a statue? He's like, no, no, there's a bear behind you. It goes without saying that Alaska is big, like way too big to see on a single road trip lasting less than a month. So we focused our trip on the South Central region of Alaska. After a wonderfully scenic flight, we landed late in the evening, picked up a rental car and went right to bed. We started our first day early with a four hour drive north to Denali. We had planned to stop for a scenic flight, but that was canceled. So we headed straight to the kennels in the national park. Hi. We got to see the dogs, but not the puppies. Like the um, the puppy, they were having a new litter just as we were there, so we didn't actually get to see them because they wanted us to all be quiet and like, yeah, give the mother some space. But we got to see the dogs themselves and pet some of them. So our flight seeing trip was canceled this morning uh, and that meant we had to head straight into Denali. Uh, with all these clouds, it wouldn't have been worth the flight seeing adventure, but instead we are going for a hike at the Savage Alpine Trail. Uh, the Savage Alpine hike was fun because uh, we got to run down the whole thing <laughs> with that mom and dad. Yeah, we had a pretty good day our first day, but despite our flight being canceled. Our second day in Denali, we did the quintessential tour of Denali. We took the Tundra Wilderness Tour. Uh, that's the only tour that's offered in this COVID year. We just sat on the bus all day. Uh, we saw all five of the big five. The big five are being a moose, um, like a semi-moose with big antlers, <laughs> a wolf, um, oh, it's called a caribou, <laughs> a wolf, a bear, and a sheep, or goat sheep. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> we saw several grizzly bears, as well as a bunch of caribou. And the grizzly bears are just a huge, no close encounters though. The moose was pretty close. She walked right across the road. Our last day in Denali, we went to Horseshoe Lake to do a quick hike before heading back south. Since our flight had been canceled a couple days earlier, we were gonna try and catch another flight on K2 Air. Um, but unfortunately, our second flight was canceled too. The hike at Horseshoe Lake was beautiful and we got to see a beaver dam and had a nice little walk even though it was in the rain around the park. Look. I like the dam because I think it looked really cool because it was just a lot of sticks there. Because it's really cool how beavers built that much stuff. After that, we headed all the way south to Matanuska Glacier for a stay for a couple days there by the glacier. The next morning we woke up from Sheep's Head Lodge and headed over on a very foggy morning to Matanuska Glacier to do a glacier hike. Uh, we hired 
Mica guides to take us out as a family on the glacier and explore and hike around on the glacier. I think this was one of my favorite days of the trip and it was just one of those moments where you really felt like you were at a different planet. It was super cool. I really loved it because not just of the pretty views, I really liked our tour guide too. His name was Casey and he gave us plenty of facts. He also took us to some trampoline moss, mud actually, as me and Russell like to call it. It was really bouncy mud. The next day we traveled from Matanuska Glacier all the way down south to Seward. We stopped along the way at the Alaska Native Heritage Center and got a chance to tour and see what native houses looked like. It was a cool stop and interesting to see how those houses were built. Uh, it was a really rainy morning so we didn't get any of the hike in that we had planned, um, but uh, we were able to stop along the Turnigan Arm and the day cleared up a little bit as we headed south to Seward. We ended the day by heading down to the beach by Tonsina Point and kind of just watching the waves go by, seeing a couple eagles and enjoying our evening. I really liked the walk on the beach because it was a black sand beach. I liked the watching the bald eagle. Our first day in Seward, we headed north to Kenai Fjords National Park to hike the Harding Icefield Trail. Got some salmon berries, delicious snack on the trail. Tastes like a nice little raspberry. Yep. Onward and upward. about halfway up to the top. We're at Marmot Meadows now, and we are stopping for a Dorito break before we climb the rest of the way up that mountain. We knew it would be a challenging hike, but the day we picked was one that ended up having rain and cold weather. It was a slog to the top. And unfortunately, we didn't have a perfectly clear view out over the Harding Ice Field, which is really uh, the highlight of the hike. Uh, seeing 700 miles of ice stretching out as far as the eye could see. Uh, we could see maybe a couple miles, but not quite the view we were hoping for. But it was definitely an awesome hike. Like, there's a main view that's like two-thirds of the way up to the top, but the very tippy top has is, uh, I think, is like way cooler and just better to do. Our second day in Seward, we took a boat cruise with Major Marine uh, into Kenai Fjords National Park. Uh, it was the six hour tour to see wildlife and the Ialac gl Glacier. Seeing a Tidewater Glacier in person was amazing. It was a good way to spend the day. I feel like we got get really lucky on animals, but not that lucky on views, because we saw three whales, a bunch of uh, sea otters, uh, a bunch of sea lions, some seals, and a bunch of puffins. Our last day in Seward, we decided to take a kayaking tour in through Resurrection Bay. We had read that the morning tours are nice and calm, a good time for families to go. The morning we picked was beautiful, crystal clear and sunny. We paddled underneath a bald eagle, saw a seal, and all kinds of other things. The seal was swimming. Unfortunately, on our way back, the winds kicked up with gusts of 30 knots. That's 35 miles per hour. It was brutal. We were worried we weren't gonna make it back. After kayaking, we had a well-deserved break for lunch and just to sit and relax by the Seward Harbor. 
Then we headed down to the Alaska Sea Life Center. The Sea Life Center was amazing. First, we headed to an area where you can dip your hands into some water, and it was freezing cold water, but you can dip your hands into the water and feel the animals that are, that like are starfish, decorator crabs, and like sea anemones, the kind that don't sting because they're not strong enough, and the um, sea urchins that don't, also don't sting. Can she touch this guy? Yeah, he's a decorator crab. So he doesn't pinch or anything? Oh, they all, they can, but they don't, generally don't. That's why we say one or two fingers and nice and gentle. The next, we headed to the puffin area where we saw a bunch of puffins. They had a sheet that we could use to identify some of them. Then we headed to the area where the seals were and saw some of them feeding. The seals would do like tricks that are pretty impressive. Our last full day in Alaska dawned yet another cold, wet, and rainy day. So we hopped in the car and drove over to the town of Whittier. Uh, we wanted to drive to Whittier so that we could drive through the Whittier Tunnel uh, and see the long rail and car tunnel that was carved during World War II. It was a really cool tunnel and cool to see. Uh, we hoped to see the Portage Glacier, but it was pretty foggy that morning and we just decided it wasn't worth it for the hike. So we hiked around at Moose Flats instead and enjoyed the views. Then we headed back to Alyeska Resort and took the tram up to the top uh, for dinner and views of the Turnigan Arm and the rest of Alaska. Our last day in Alaska, we slept in a little bit, packed up our bags, and headed along the Turnigan Arm uh, back to um, the city of Anchorage. Uh, we stopped a little bit to explore and see the boar tide. Uh, after that, we headed over to Kincaid Park and walked a little bit of the uh, Tony Knowles Coastal Trail and wanted to go down and see Kincaid Beach. After this, we are headed back to the airport. It makes me very sad that we have to leave Alaska and I hope to come back someday.